Hey everyone, welcome. Today we are going to look into the Unity default button and how we can create our custom buttons and extend its functionality. So let's get started. First of all, I have a scene set up in which I have a canvas with the scale mode set to scale with screen size and the resolution is full HD. Under the canvas, I have two buttons with one is a default button, which has an image and a button component attached to it. And the other one is an extended button, which only has the image component. So first of all, let's look at the default button. The Unity default button gives us a few functionalities out of the box. First one is its interactivity. We can enable and disable it. The transitions, it can be a sprite swap animation or color tint. By default, we use color tint. And next, it has some states like enable, disable, highlighted, normal color, and all of those. And apart from that, we can attach on-click events to it as well. So let's quickly create a simple script through which we will add an on-click event and show a message in the console. So let's go to our assets folder, right click, create, and let's create a script. Let's call this our default button. And after the creation of this script, we are going to open it. Once the script is open, first of all, we are going to create a public class field of the type button. And let's call it my button. Then in the awake function, we are going to attach an on click listener to it dot on click dot add listener and this is going to be on click my button and let's quickly create this function and in this function we are going to simply log a message to the console and let's make this public it should be private if we want to attach it inside the script but i'm going to show you how to attach it in the editor as well so let's make it public for now hit save button go back to unity and We'll attach our default button script to the canvas and we'll drag and drop our button over here. Let's hit the play button. And now if I click the first button, you should see a message in the console. Another way to attach our on click event would be to remove this from here. And inside our editor, let's click the button and in the on click event, we'll drag and drop our canvas then we are going to select our on click button function and let's hit the play button apart from that you can see that when I, I highlight this button you can see the highlighted color if I click it you'll see the pressed color and these are the other states and after the click you can see the message again but the issue right now is that when I click this button there is no sound no visual feedback or for instance we want to disable this button for a little while then enable it again so all of these functionalities can be added by extended the default unity button we can also add these functionalities by adding them to the script over here and creating a prefab but for instance let's say we want to have a hundred buttons in our game our game is ui focused so it will be really hard to create different type of prefabs for all our buttons and managing will managing them will become hectic so now we are going to extend the default unity button functionality and add some of our own functionalities for the sake of this tutorial i am going to keep it simple and just add a cooldown effect uh, audio effect when we click the button and some simple other effects so let's get started with that first of all for our custom button let's create the script so go to create script and let's just call this our extended button open it up once open, what we are going to do is we are not going to extend mono behavior, but instead we need to extend the default unity button. And over here, what we are going to do is we are going to add our properties. For now, we want to add some audio properties to our extended button. So let's create a header for those properties. And then finally, let's create the serialized field. Serialized field, the first one is going to be a private audio clip, audio clip audio hover sound so like this I'm going to create some more properties and I'm going to fast forward over here so let's do that okay now that we have created our properties let's create our first function which is going to be the awake function that we are going to override and first we'll call the base dot awake so that the default functionality of the UI button is called after that we will check the audio source if the audio source equals to null then 
what we are going to do is try to get it if it's still null then we are going to create it and player on awake should be set to false okay sounds good now the next function we need is the on pointer enter so on pointer enter here this one first we'll call the base then we'll check if we are hovering not hovering then simply set is hovering to true and then what we are going to do is we are going to say if the hover sound is not equal to null and our what's the name of it audio source is not equal to null if our audio source is not null then our audio clip should be equal to the audio clip should be equal to the hover sound audio source dot clip should be equal to the hover sound and the hover sound should be an audio clip oh this should be an audio clip and this also should be an audio clip and here where, 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 here after we have assigned this then we are basically going to play the sound and we are going to invoke the on hover enter and we are going to do something similar in the on hover exit but the opposite of this so let's do that quickly on pointer exit and we are going to check if we are hovering is hovering and then we are going to say that if the click sound is not equal to not not click sound if is hovering then we need to check the hover state then we are going to say is hovering equals to false and on hover exit invoke and finally we'll add one final function for the on click sound public override on pointer click and we are going to say that base dot on pointer click and here we also need to call the base function base dot on pointer exit and finally we are going to say that if the click sound is not equal to null and the audio source is not equal to null then the audio source dot clip where is it dot clip equals to click sound and we are going to play it that's it that's uh, our basic extended button functionality now if i go back to unity and i assign this script to my normal button here you can see i can see none of the properties which we created in the function for that we need to create an editor script let's do that so the editor script is going to be a simple one first of all we need to create this editor folder and then we need to create a script let's call this our mm, extended button editor open this up and we need to extend the button editor class button editor button editor class and let's remove all of this we don't need this and the type which we are going to require is going to be a custom editor and the type is going to be of extended button and let's set the second property to true now the other thing is we need to add one more which is can edit multiple objects it's quite clear by the name that with this header we can enable editing of the multiple objects now let's add some serialized properties for our custom fields so the first one is going to be a serialized property called hover sound property now oh, i'm uh, going to add the rest of them quickly so i'm going to fast forward here okay i have added the other properties and you can see we have a hover sound a click sound an audio source or exit and enter on hover now we need to create basically override the on enable function on enable so that is going to be protected override on enable we are going to call the base class and then we need to link our custom properties to those present in the extended button so let's do that the first one is hover sound property and we need to say serialized object dot find property hover sound do remember that the name should match exactly so copy paste the names from here to here i am going to fast forward here as well so let's do that okay i have added all of these properties and as you can see the name should match exactly as those that are present in the script so make sure the names match now the next main function is going to be our overrided on inspector gui function so this is going to be a public override on inspector gui and inside this function first we need to call the base class uh, no sorry first we need to call the update on the serialized object then we need to call the base dot on inspector gui and finally we are going to add some space so let's do that and this is going to be space and 
let's add some label fields for our editor so it looks kind of pleasant all of these are basically making it look a bit easier to read so let's just add one simple header over here let's just call it extended button properties and then we need to add our property fields we can do it using editor GUI layout dot property field and give it the name of the field which is this one and it is linked to this class field so let's do that quickly for the others as well so here I have added all of the properties and also the events now one last thing we need to do is we need to apply the modified objects we are going to do that serialize object dot apply modified properties and just save this button uh, sorry save this script go back to unity and go to the extended button we should see all of our properties over here now let's actually test whether it works or not okay let's test uh, okay we have a small problem and okay i think i made the wrong access modifier this should be public let's save and now we are going to attach our audio clips to the respective fields and the first one is going to be the power sound and the click sound i'm going to use same for both of them and for our hover events we are going to do something a bit later so first of all let's play and test see if we can hear the sound so if i go to the extended button i can hear the sound and if i click i hear the sound again so our custom button audio is working now let's add some hover effects now let's connect our hover effects so for that we can create a really simple script let's create a script now and let's just call it um, button scalar let's open it up and for this what we are going to do is first of all let's create a public float hover scale let's set it to 1.1 for now we can change it in, in the inspector later on and we are going to save the original scale that is going to be a vector 3 original scale General scale okay and then in the start function we are going to say original scale equals to transform dot local scale and public void on hover we are going to say that the local scale is should be equal to the hover scale so let's do this and after that on hover exit public void on hover exit we are going to say transform dot local scale is equal to the original scale local scale equal to the original scale so these are the simple functions we need and all you need to do is just connect these functions to our extended button we on the button itself for now and let's hit the play button not the play button let's attach the scripts again like this and let's call our functions hit the play button as you can see as I go into the button it plays the sound and scales so we can create different types of extended functionalities like this and I hope you guys find this video educational and entertaining. I'll see you in the next one.